Hey, it's John with the Active Towns Channel, and uh, I'm here in Oklahoma City for CNU 30, and uh, I'm going to go for a ride down to uh, where the conference site is located. So I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to ride uh, the bike every day to the Congress. All right, let's go. I'm staying in the Midtown District here, just north of the downtown area. And as you can see, Lee Street here is pretty narrow, not much traffic whatsoever. And I haven't really seen any significant levels of car traffic on any streets during my stay. Here's one of the cross streets, and now you can just get a sense of how wide these original streets are. I'm going to go down to 5th Street here and then hang a left. And then we'll get on to the Walker Avenue bike lane, which will take us right into the downtown area. And again, you can just see how massively wide Fifth Street is here. This could totally go through a nice road diet to create some space for people on bikes. and you can see the downtown area off in the distance. The really tall skyscraper there is Devon Tower, and we'll see that again and talk about it in just a few moments. And in the distance there, you can see Walker Avenue. That's where we're going to be able to connect with the bike lane. Now, it's just a standard bike lane at this stage of Walker. Further to the south, it becomes a protected bike lane, and we'll get to see more of that in a future video. One of the biggest challenges Oklahoma City is that they redid many of these downtown streets already. Most of them were previously multi-lane, one-way streets, and then they turned them into two-way streets. And in the bike network plan that they had at the time, it was just the normal application of a painted bike lane. Now granted, those plans were done well over a decade ago, and so obviously it's not best practice now. There's plenty of space that could have been reconfigured so that a parking protected bikeway could be created if you insisted on having on-street parking, which has its benefits from a walkability perspective. But really, you know, I'm seeing that there are so very few motor vehicles coming to the downtown area that I don't know that all this on-street parking is really all that necessary. But well, that's another topic for a different discussion entirely. And it's understood here at the city that they sort of missed the opportunity to create an all ages and ability cycle network. And so they're working on it. They're trying to figure out how to rejigger the plans and redo it. But unfortunately, most of the heavy duty expensive concrete work has already been done. So it will be all about trying to reimagine how to redo the paint and reconfigure stuff without having to do the expensive concrete and brick work as they did here. As you can see, it's obviously an extensive treatment area. And truth be told, the downtown area here is much improved compared to what it was like before. And 
now we're approaching Main Street. Main Street does have a bike lane further down to the right. However, in this particular area of Main Street, they just have Sharrows. I've been able to get some footage rolling down in that direction as you head into the film district. And it's really pretty cool stuff. Fascinating history to the area. And again, to be covered in a future video. And again, here's another one of our squiggles to let us know that we're approaching a school off to the right here at the corner. And in fact, it's an elementary school. We're going to go across this intersection to sort of do a Dutch type two step staged left so that we can get a sense of the bike path both off to the right as well as to the left going eastbound. So we'll stage up here. And you can get a sense of the bike lane. Again, an older painted bike lane. Oops. <laughs> and actually it's being blocked by that delivery vehicle. I wanted to do it this way so that you can get a sense as to where we are relative to downtown and that big Devon Tower. And here's a glimpse of some more of the newer sections of the Walker Avenue bike lane. The protected section starts on about a block or so. But as you may notice up ahead, it might not be super evident at this point, but take a look at that sign and you can see that it says the bike lane ends. <laughs> well, gee, thank you. Yeah, the bike lane just abruptly ends. And check out this sign, walk your bike. Oh yeah, I am so going to do that. Not. <laughs> so obviously the thought process, well, not well thought out at all, actually, when they redid the myriad botanical gardens. And again, there's Devon Tower. And the reason why I keep pointing to the Devon Tower is because they helped revitalize the downtown. In fact, it was part of the conditions that they had for building their headquarters building here in the first place. They wanted to see the downtown area reconfigured and revitalized, requiring that all of this downtown area is redone. And to their credit, they provided significant assistance in doing that. But getting back to the bike lane, so clearly this is a situation where the bike lane just abruptly ends and then you are either choosing to control the lane and fight for yourself or you're supposed to walk here in this wider sidewalk area. And in fact, riding on the sidewalk is technically currently illegal in the downtown area. But as you'll see in a future video, another facility the city just actually built, a quote unquote multi-use path, but it's not signed as such, and there's no indication that it is a multi-use path. And so I have to wonder if there are any instances of police officers ticketing people riding bikes on that glorified multi-use path or sidewalk, whatever it is. Okay. Since I have a pedestrian up ahead, I'm going to pop on over and control the lane because I'm a confident rider and there honestly is very little motor vehicle traffic, so I'm fine controlling the lane. But this is clearly not an all ages and abilities approach to a bicycle network, and that is exactly what the city deserves. Obviously, very little of what we'll see in Oklahoma City is in fact considered appropriate for all ages and ability, virtually none of it. But again, I don't want to be too critical. Most of this was planned in a different era of bike network design, which is why these plans need to be frequently updated to current worldwide best practices. Now, up ahead, you'll see that the bike lane just miraculously reappears. And there's actually something really cool up here that I'll show you in just a moment. And just glancing back at the myriad botanical gardens here as I'm waiting for our light to go forward, 
It's just an absolutely beautiful little oasis here in the downtown area. And it's part of a network of green spaces called Core, the core of the downtown, to the shore, the shore of the river. Okay, here's that bike lane I was telling you about. And here's that nice little feature, a protected cycleway going over to the other side of the transit stop. Well done, Oklahoma City. Now, apply those concepts all throughout the city and you'll have a cycle network which encourages all ages and abilities to be able to ride more often. There you go, here we are at the conference site, the Sheraton downtown. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little ride here to the downtown area, to the Congress site. This is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.